What's up everybody? This is the second video in the options crash course, if you will. In this video, we're going to be going over how to understand them when looking which option to buy, as well as a good brokerage for trading options. But I want to start off with the reason why I like options so much. So if we look here um, at the S&P 500 SPY today, if we go high to low, 385 12 to 377.72 that's about seven and a half eight dollar range so even if you short the very top of that um, range down you make eight dollars per share you have to put at least let's see what 385 in at that top level um, with options this is where we can leverage our money a lot better and i'll give an example of that here in a second but even if you know we caught this first move here if we go from these lows here up to that 385 12 if you're buying shares on this you're making about six dollars per share if you catch the exact bottom and sell at the very top with options the beautiful thing is it allows us to leverage that money we'll flip over here this is just we will here um and looking at this is a 380 put for tomorrow expiration if we catch that move that same move from the very top it goes from 0.8 to four so you're making 320 dollars per option at 0.8, that, that's a pretty good premium to buy in at. Very good risk to reward there as well. And you can just see how the options allow us to leverage that lower sum of money. Now, if we, if we look on the call side, you know, maybe we took those 385s early. So if we take these 385s early, early on even, we see 0.89, hit a 2.7 here, really topping about 2.5. So that's, again, 0.9, 2.5. $160 per share. If we catch that little bounce, 0.52, gets up to 2.18, but around two. So then again, $150 per contract that is owned. That's why I love options and why I like trading them over equity because you can leverage those lower sums of money once you know you figure out what to do. There is more risk involved because options do move super fast and there's a little bit more thinking, but we're gonna start to break that down today and hopefully get a better understanding when we look into these options here. That brings me to the next thing I kind of want to talk about just just real quick here, and that's what brokerage I use for trading. I use Webull personally. I started out with TD. The fees on options contracts honestly just added up over time, and I got sick and tired of it. Um, so that's why I made the switch to Webull. Um, no commissions. It, it's pretty easy to use. And I also like Webull Desktop. That is what I was using there before. I'll flip back to that here in a minute to understand these options a little bit better. But um, I love Weeble and I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link if you want, or you can just Google Weeble and it, it'll pop up. Now comes the point of the video that really wanted to get out there and kind of understand how to read options better and get, get a little bit better understanding, especially if you've seen, you know, this is the first time ever seeing an option or you're thinking about going into the options game. So first thing first, we have calls and puts calls targeting or favoring that upside and puts favoring that downside looking for that downside move um, for this i'm also going to just be regarding to simple just buying calls or puts simple strategy nothing you know too advanced as of right now let's flip over here for a second back to this so areas you know where we would want to buy calls saying that we get the very perfect entry so one area would be let me get a little tool here you know buy some calls right here buy calls here if we can time right it perfectly time have a nice pullback here you know time that okay cool now for puts let's delete these real quick puts just going to be the opposite you know looking for that down downside move here we could you know maybe a quick scout probably not as we'll talk about this later but the intraday trend here obviously bullish bulls have pushed this out up so that's one area where on a pullback, we'd like to see that retest. We do, don't really get a retest here before breaking to, to higher highs, but I'll cover that more in the uh, next video. But in terms of puts, right here, nice retest. Any of these in here, probably we got faked out. Okay, we get that nice pull. Second, we get this same similar pullback, previous highs, cool. Um, you know, down in here we could, I, I think this gets a little bit more risky and then obviously here if you want later in the day, but those are the areas looking for puts. Um, and we'll cover what exactly looking for when it comes to calls and puts in next video. But in terms of just what a basic call and what a basic put is, um, calls favoring that upside and puts favoring that downside. All right, back over to 
what would be an active trader here for our options. So first thing first, you know, every single strike here um, is going to have an expiration date. In this case, SPY, these indices, SPY, QQ, QQQ, IWM, will have Monday, Wednesday, Friday expirations, one, three, six days, um, or zero, two, four. Um, but as you see here, these expire November 9th. So that that is what, Wednesday, tomorrow? Shit, okay, cool. Um, so that's the first thing first. You know, if I click on it, cool, can go in here. But then we have our strike price. Strike price, this would be a 382 call with an expiration tomorrow. Um, and then puts, you know, same way. Second thing we notice are the, these red and uh, green numbers here, which are the bid and the ask. But more importantly, the premium right here is the last, in this case, on Weeble. Um, it's what buyers or sellers are willing to pay for that contract. And that's how inevitably you make money trading options. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that goes into options, right? Like extrinsic value, intrinsic value, um, how close we are to expiration, implied volatility, stuff like that. But we're going to focus here in terms of day trading on the stuff that, in my opinion, is the most important. Um, and first thing first here, implied volatility. Really, the key thing here is we want to buy towards lower IV. As we see here with um, SPY, we got 30 IVs. If I check, like, let's check Snapchat here, um, our IV is up towards 100. That means it's going to take a greater move for these contracts premium to go up in price, therefore making us money. IV is elevated when certain events are coming up, such as earnings, um, FOMC for the indices here. So that that's one thing to notice. But when when I'm looking for IV, I'm looking for you know on SPY, I'm looking from like 30 to 40 percent usually. Most of the time, we're staying in that range. Zero DTE also is going to increase your IV significantly. Um, but in terms of other stocks, you know, names, they aren't our indices, Apple, for example, it really depends honestly on, on the uh, ticker you're trying to trade. Each ticker will have a different personality as will their options and, and their contracts, right? So Apple's gonna have a smaller, or uh, a lower IV, um, whereas Snapchat has that higher IV. But when I'm looking for IV on names that are not I, IWM, QQQ, SPY, those indices, I'm looking for you know about 60 to 80 percent. I'll play with the hundreds here and there, um, but if that's the case, I'm going to size down. Next thing is going to be the open interest or the OI. This is how many contracts are currently being held. Um, the most important thing I think to note here is OI resets in the morning, so it does not reset throughout the day. Um, if you're going to swing something or hold something overnight, this is something you know check in the morning. To see if people are actually holding it onto those contracts or, or they liquidated them yesterday but because it does not update until the mornings um it, it is not shown yet another one similar to oi is volume volume is how many shares are traded so opened and closed that closed being you know the big thing there every single day and they reset throughout the day but volume is important because we do need volume in order to get in and out of contracts that's why i personally prefer trading just iawm Qs and SPY. SPY and Qs definitely have better um, liquidity there, volume to get in and out of those positions pretty easy. Don't really have to worry about that as much. But on individual tickers, that is one thing, you know, got to kind of take into consideration is which which contracts have enough liquidity to get in and out at, at a pretty decent spot. Another big one, talked about a little bit earlier, didn't go in depth, is uh, the bid-ass spread. So here on SPY, bid-ass spread is one, the bid, 1.01 .01 is the ass so our spreads very very tight all these names here on spy are going to be like that if we look apple would be decent if we look at um, snapchat here they're actually pretty decent as well let's see if i go if i go to paypal here see we have a little bit higher spreads i try to aim for you know 0 0.5 maybe 0 0.1 at the highest on spreads um just because it helps me get in and out of positions easier there is ways to definitely take advantage of the spreads, um, but that's you know something that takes some time and some practice for sure. The last part of this that I want to cover is um, further outdated options are going to move slower, which can be you know a good thing or a bad thing, right? Speed is something you you struggle with or you don't want something that's going to be super volatile. Going further out is definitely a good option. As we see here, you know definitely. Decent moves still. This is a uh, six day, so four, November 14th, 385 calls. Um, they went from three to 
555. They're gonna be more expense, expensive because of that premium. Going to be easier to control, easier to manage that position. Um, when first beginning, I'd say this is definitely something I'd focus on is not having to try and hit those home runs every day with zero DTEs. You know, build up some confidence in your system um, and learn what it's like to trade certain tickers, how they move and how fast they move because each ticker is gonna move a little bit different. That's going to conclude today's video. Be back Thursday. I'm going to start doing, I'm going to post Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday instead of Monday, Thursday, Sunday. I think it just makes a little bit more sense to my brain. Um, we'll be back then and we'll get more in depth and start to really break down some things. But, you know, it's hard to trade and be confident in your trading if you don't know at least a little bit of the basics behind why things happen, what an option is, what the hell am I even looking at? So I think that's definitely a huge part there.